Oh, hi, everyone. Can you uh, hear me at the back? Yes? No? OK. Um, so I'm uh, Andrew. Um, I work for a geospatial consultancy, um, Alancio. Um, and we are kind of a local partner for Mapillary. Um, so you're probably wondering kind of where all this fits in with QGIS. So um, there's a, a, a product coming out called Mapillary for QGIS, um, which is actually just a plugin for QGIS. So I hope you all know what um, QGIS is, but <laughs> maybe just to give you a bit of um, understanding of where this fits in, I'll just kind of very quickly run through where Mapillary, um, what, what that is, and how that can actually fit into QGIS. So Mapillary is a platform for street level imagery. So basically, um, there's a whole bunch of kind of images that are kind of captured on the kind of street level. Um, it doesn't have to be streets. It could be um, railways or whatever. But the whole point is kind of all these individual images that are kind of captured. Um, and then from that, that can be uh, kind of an asset that you can use um, as part of your GIS. So here's kind of an example. Uh, I'll just load it up um, of one particular mapillary image. Um, and so you can go around and kind of move along, kind of move around, um, and then you've got kind of the map at the bottom where you can see where you are. Um, so it's captured from by you um, or uh, a whole community of people who are contributing um, from any device. So you don't need an expensive rig to kind of do this within your organization. You can use um, your mobile phone, um, stick it on like a mount inside a vehicle um, or on a bicycle or any other kind of mode of transport um, with an action camera or um, there's many uh, consumer level um, 3D cameras that can also let you capture the whole kind of scene in 3D. Um, like the whole scene where you can pan around like I showed you. So it's quite, quite easy to kind of get into it. Um, and I guess the, the thing is you can capture the areas that are important to you. So if there's a particular site that you're working on or you're kind of um, dealing with particular assets, um, you can capture the areas or the regions um, that are important to you. Um, and you can choose how often you want to capture, so the frequency. Um, so what you'd do is you'd go out and capture this or utilize what other people have captured um, and then upload that to Mapillary. And that really provides um, the platform for where all this stuff is um, hosted. So you don't have to worry about storing it all. Um, because it, as you can imagine, lots of all these photos are quite, it, will, it adds up in terms of volume of, of data. Um, so that, that's what Mapillary is. It's a platform for that. Um, and so from that, uh, there's a whole bunch of kind of computer vision algorithms, um, AI algorithms that run on that imagery uh, to do things like detect traffic signs, um, to detect various assets. So whether it's um, yeah, traffic signs or you've got like pits in the ground um, or it could be like fire hydrants or any, a, a whole bunch of kind of assets that they, that they kind of automatically detect from, the, from your um, images. So that's all really good and useful, but um, I guess you're interested in QGIS, and so this is kind of saying on the side, but what QGIS for, um, sorry, what Mapillary for QGIS will be is it lets you bring all of that inside your JS. So if I just jump over to here, um, this is kind of, it's, so the, the plugin um, hasn't been released yet, it's still in development, but um, it's expected to be out um, in January, but it could, yeah, it's, it's, there's no hard date yet, but it, it's basically going to let you bring in that content into inside QGIS. So, um, so I'll just jump back to here. So I guess initially you can see where the imagery is. So over here on the map, we've just got loaded in a OpenStreetMap base um, and then the mapillary photos and sequences. So as you're kind of going around on the map, you get this kind of window over here which shows um, that image and then you can kind of go through that. Uh, but then there's also other things you could do. For instance, over here we've got um, that same particular photo that we're looking at from before. 
And you can see here it's, it's synced up to the map. So it shows where that um, image is on the map. Um, it's also got kind of where the cursor is. Um, the accuracy is going to depend on like how accurate it was when it was captured and a few other things. Um, but we've also got these markers here that you can see we've added um, again in the, in the, in the photo. Um, but over on the map where all your other GIS data is, so in this case I've just loaded in um, some road center lines, some building footprints. Um, but then you can see this kind of red marker and I can even pick it up and start dragging around and it remains in sync. So there's, I guess it opens up, um, it gives you more kind of information about like what's actually happening on the ground. Um, and it's really helpful, I guess, if you're trying to validate <coughs> some of this data, because you've got nothing beats like actually having that view um, of what's really there. Um, so that's, that's some of the functions that the QGIS um, plugin, so that, sorry, the Mapillary plugin will have. Um, <coughs> And uh, yeah, I mean, there, there could be many more things that you could do from that. So, so for instance, like with the, the traffic sign detection, um, it's possible to then bring that in as a layer so that you can see what are the traffic signs that Mapillary has detected and then say that, compare that with your um, inventory. Um, that's just kind of one example, but there's other asset classes as well. Uh, Yeah, so, and then like you can see here, um, it's actually, so I don't have a demo of this in QGIS yet, um, but for instance, um, they do detect certain features, um, and in this case, you can also go in and tag them. So over here, it's like tag, this is a bicyclist, um, tag, this one's tagged as a car, uh, and a whole bunch of other features kind of within the imagery. Um, and by bringing that into QGIS, uh, I guess you can see that right next to your um, JS data and then in the same environment. So that's, um, that's basically my presentation. Uh, any questions? Yeah? Is there, is there a web interface as well? Yeah, so at the moment, um, Mapillary um, is basically on the web. So you can access all of this through the Mapillary website. Um, so you can already do that at the moment. I guess the, the, the Mapillary plugin for QGIS is about bringing that into QGIS so that you don't have to kind of have one window open here on the web um, and then QGIS over here and they're not really synced. It's actually bringing it together so it's, um, it's all together and it's all synced up. Mm. And what's the business model behind Yeah, so I guess um, if you're, at the moment, all of the, people can contribute imagery and then kind of make it public on the Mapillary platform so anyone can use it. Um, if you're kind of capturing this, say, your own uh, site and you don't want to make that public, then there's kind of commercial options to, to keep that um, as a public, uh, sorry, as a private instance. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of going into commercials. Um, mm. But the, the QGIS plugin will be free. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, they're still devel developing it. Yeah, so Mapillary is um, basically a platform. There's certain components. Yes, so it's a commercial, but then there's also, uh, f so there's different tiers. So you've got like a free tier um, for people can use it in that capacity, but it depends what functionality um, you're using. Mm. I guess um, the, this, this plugin can work with um, the Mapillary um, instance, whether you're using the free tier or the commercial tiers. Mm. Yep. So uh, I guess uh, Nathan wrote something with Earthmine in Australia a while ago, and I've used that. So this was a very similar replacement to that, now that Earthmine is sort of... To, to what, sorry? Earthmine. Earthmine. So sort of our road mapping service. Yep. Uh, Nokia Air Maps provided for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so um, Mapillary has a, um, a web API, so it's a REST API. So the QGIS plugin is actually just calling that to retrieve things like these, um, each of these photos, um, and it's just integrating with uh, that as a service. So I guess all of these images are hosted um, by Mapillary, 
and then um, within the plugin, it's actually pulling that down um, over the web into, into QGIT. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of going into more technical stuff. But yeah, there is a, there is a concept of an API key to for for particular accounts. Yep. Yep. Uh, so if you upload, um, so anyone can go out and capture images, um, and then that you can choose to upload that to Mapillary. So by default, you choose to upload it, it goes publicly, and then anyone can, can view that. And that um, gets processed, so they do things like they blur faces, they blur license plates, and then they detect traffic signs and other um, features within that image, or the whole bunch of images. So, so it's, I guess it's a whole sequence. Um, typically, you'd, you'd drive around um, or walk around or something, and then you'd capture all of these individual images, um, and then they get all processed by Mapillary, and the, you would then consume that um, if you want within QGIS. Mm. Also, coverage? Yeah, so um, at the moment, uh, <coughs> if I go to... So at the moment, it's kind of um, what... It's a crowdsourced effort, so people are actually going around um, and contributing stuff. So if I just kind of turn some of these filters off, you can kind of see um, these green lines are where there's coverage at the moment. Um, so it's kind of an ongoing effort to, to, to get more coverage. So. It, it's it's like if you you can there's a lot of kind of stuff here already. At the same time, you have the capability to go out and capture yourself and contribute. Um, if there's particular areas that you're interested in that aren't covered at the moment. Mm. What fills in the gaps? Anything? Like um, uh, yeah. So at the moment, it's only kind of these regions. But um, yeah, as I mentioned, it's kind of people are contributing um, an, on an ongoing basis, or you can. Um, so you can kind of contribute yourself. So if you go to somewhere like where there's no, um, nothing there, you, you, it's just not there at the moment. Mm. And internationally, is this just Australia? No, this is um, international. So if I zoom out, I think it's still loading. Um, you can see they have a very um, kind of internet, it's, it's global coverage. Yep, it's not specific to Australia. So the the images that people contribute that contribute, um, if you if you're kind of contributing it publicly, so you choose to make your images available to the public, um, it's under a Creative Commons license. So you have to kind of accept that when you upload it to Mapillary. If you're if you're not on one of the commercial plans that lets you upload into your private instance. Um, so then, uh, so what some people, a lot of people are actually using this to improve data in OpenStreetMap. So all of this information is then available for, say, OpenStreetMap um, to improve their maps and improve um, all the GIS or the geographic data within OpenStreetMap using Mapillary. Mm. And it's also just, you can weave it into whatever app you want to, as yeah. long as you CC by yeah, well, I guess the individual images are available under that license. If you're using um, map mapillary services, then there's also um, terms of service around that. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, it'll just show up twice. So there's actually one feature where you can kind of compare. So if you've got um, an area kind of being captured over time, <laughs> there's a time slider here where you can actually. Um, see all the different images um, that are captured and kind of slide and compare the differences between them. Um, there's also a filter you can use in, uh, uh, I can't show at the moment, but in um, QGIS, in the plugin, where you can filter by the date. So if you're kind of continually capturing an area, um, you might then set up a filter to only show where the date is like within the last six months or something to, to only show the most recent. Stuff, but yeah, I mean, it, it's actually um, it's really good if you keep capturing, um, and Mapillary encourage you to, to go over and over again because obviously things change, um, and it's only going to be uh, like useful if it's kept up to date and kept current. Um, so yeah, there's no problem with kind of continually like capturing the same region. Mm. Yep. Sorry, I've used something similar before, so I'm, I'm, I'm 
have lots of comparison questions here. Yep. Uh, in the work mind, you have a process of point cloud behind the images. So you yep. process one. Yep. Yep, so Mapillary um, does all that behind the scenes when you upload it. So when you upload all your imagery um, or other people are uploading to Mapillary, it's actually doing that as part of their processing. Um, so you notice like if I uh, go to this particular image, it's, if, you've got, if you've captured much more frequently, so there's a less of a gap, um, they're actually kind of generating this point cloud which is a 3D um, scene. Um, so that you can actually see when you move from one photo to the other, it will try and um, make that a bit more smooth based on that. It's not exposed um, at the moment, so you can't like load that in or view that, but it is something that um, Mapillary do generate and are kind of looking at how they can further like use that. Mm. Yep. Uh, so you know, um, <laughs> So you mean if you've, like in QGIS, if you're loading in, so it doesn't. S say the 3D view that we saw previously. Yeah. That's an example of it, the kind of 3D view. Yeah. Like, so grabbing the imagery and using it as facades for the. Yeah. So it won't. It won't do that at the moment. Like, um, you could kind of manually do that, but it's not going to. Um, at the moment, like the plans for the QGIS plugin. It, um, when it's kind of released, it's not going to, um, I don't think, integrate with the 3D part. Yep. That's theoretically possible, like down the road, it might be. Maybe, yep. Yep. Um, what's the turnaround time between submitting an image and appearing? Yeah, um, it's usually quite quick. It, it does vary a bit, but it's, 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 like, it's never more than a day. Um, it might be two hours, it might be five hours, um, yeah. But it's usually like not, not more than a day, but there's no, I guess, um, yeah, it depends like how much you upload, it will, like how, how, how much you've captured. But it's usually pretty quick, um, so next day usually. Mm. Yep. What sort of format and size limitations do you have? Yeah, um, well, if you're, if you're capturing um, so yeah, you can capture with any of these devices, um, and it's, there's not really any size limitations. It's like however much you capture, um, however kind of be, uh, bigger resolution you capture, you can just upload that, and Mapillary will handle it. Mm. Does it have to, can it be video? Um, yeah. So there was there is an option um, if you have a if you've actually captured a video, but it will go out and kind of. Yeah, basically chop it up into a whole bunch of images from that video and then submit that and use that. So when you're looking at it, it won't be like a continuous video. It'll just be a whole bunch of scenes. Um, so there's, a, there's a, an app for Android and iOS um, that kind of does the capture for you. So basically you say start and then it will just capture. You can say either every like three meters, five meters um, or every 10 seconds, five seconds and it'll just keep taking those photos. Um, and then say that you yeah, upload, and then it uploads, um, and then that's available for for using QGIS. Yep. Now, um, most trucks that council actually has cameras mounted on each truck. Yep. So, uh, could this be an opportunity to get Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's uh, the mobile apps, but then a, a lot of people do it using action cameras because they're kind of better set up to capture um, at continuous intervals like that. So yeah, um, and it doesn't, if you're not using the apps, that's fine. You can do it using an action camera where, or a separate camera where you just manually take the photos from that camera and then upload it. Um, so if you're using the app, it'll automatically take care of that. You just hit upload. Um, but if you're using a separate camera, you just take the photos, upload it um, via the, there's a, an interface at Mapillary to upload that. Um, so yeah, the, the only thing I'd mention, you need, yeah, so if you're using, um, say, an action camera, you need like a GPS as well to tag that. So typically you'd need to then, um, and, and make sure they're synced. So you have to kind of set up the time sync. Um, there is some things to help you do that. So if you have like a GPX file, and then also some photos, you can then go and tag the photos with locations. Um, but that is something that needs to be done. Yeah. Yep. Talking about GPS and uh, positioning, yep. 
process and reposition your frame? Yeah, or? yeah. Um, so when you, so either when you upload or after you have uploaded, you can actually go in and, and kind of manually tweak the location um, if you want. So, I mean, it'll automatically set the location based on the GPS coordinates, um, but you can actually go and move it if you want to fix it up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep, that's it. Cool.